Okay, so we're getting into the exciting part. We're up to the part. I don't know if you guys remember this car in the game had like this stupidly big spoiler. So what I want to do today is I want to build a spoiler, but I want to build one not off the boot here. I want to build it to attach to these bumpers. So, I mean, yeah, this, this fiberglass bumper mount. I want to attach the spoiler, which I'll be doing that with... Uh, I'll be using some pipe today. You'll see it later on. But what I want to do is I want it to just bolt into these stock uh, mounts right here, which will, be, which will be relatively easy. I still need to test the horn on camera. I'm going to have to tell Harry not to watch that episode, the one that's got the horns in it, because I want something to be a surprise. And yeah, that's it. So we'll do a bit of tube bending. I haven't done tube bending since the Ford, so I'm going to have to try not to make a mistake and get into it. It's super windy today. It is kind of cold. I shouldn't complain because there is people experiencing even cold weather. So if I complain, that'll look stupid. And uh, I'm looking at you, Aaron, from Ada 2 Garage. Man, you... Oh, man. He works on his cars and there's like eight feet of snow. And if I complain about the cold, <laughs> it's just not going to be funny. Okay, let's get to it. So I'm going to show this process because this is what uh, I've come up with with the help of other YouTubers, but uh, this is how I kind of uh, run the tube and I found it to work. It worked on the Ford, so I'm going to try and do it again. So what I've, di what I've done so far is I've taken the measurement and I've gone, I want the bend, I want the pipe to kind of start here and from what I can see I want the bend to start at 400 millimeters. And then when the bend starts, I've taken this and I've locked in the angle that I want. So when I take this over to the bender, I'll put this piece of wood on the bender and I'll measure this angle. Um, obviously, yeah, I'll measure that angle and I'll figure out how much I, I want. So I'll put that little magnetic level along this edge. Okay, so... Um, I'll show you the, the tools and the process that I go through with this. I really only use this uh, bender for hobby stuff. I haven't really used it for work or anything, so I haven't gotten any like uh, super accurate uh, tools or whatever. So what I do is, let's, uh, let's go over the basics. So I know I want the bend to start at 400 millimeters, so I'll take that note down. And now we're going to f figure out what angle we want. So I was showing you this tool earlier. I'm not exactly sure what it's meant for, but this is what it's meant for now. So what? because I leveled this surface, you, you would have seen that at the beginning of the video. Now what I do is I just put this wood on this surface, nice and firmly. I take this and I just place it and I make sure that it's flat up against this edge. And then that will tell me what angle I want. Because I put this up against the car to figure out what angle I want. And then I put this up against here and it tells me 60 degrees. So now I know my first bend is going to be 400 millimeters at 400 millimeters. And it's going to be 60 degree. It's going to be a 60 degree bend. So now if I mark that down, 60 degree bend. Now I can go ahead and make the first bend. Alright, so it's been a week. We had some technical difficulties with the bender. So the bolt that basically uh, holds the pipe in place. I over tightened it. It stripped itself and we had to get a new one. Now I found out that the bolt that was originally there it was galvanized for some reason so I'm pretty sure like I looking back on the footage I didn't over tighten it I, it, I tightened it pretty well but I really like this size bolt you shouldn't be able to over tighten by hand um, so we're gonna get back into it uh, I managed to get one bend off before we before I screwed up that bolt okay so the way I've got it set up now is so that I can do it on my own Take this, put it up against both mounts, 
and then line this up with the pipe and then I will line this up with the blue square channel. So now to figure out where the bend should start. Now I reckon, I reckon we start the bend like here. All right, let's go over to the tube bender. 21 degrees, right there. So now before I start my next bend, I tighten the tube in place. I take my pitch angle calculator and I put it on the end of the pipe, the tube, sorry. And I basically make it level sitting at zero all the way to the end of the tube, right? And the reason for that is my tube bender is level in all directions. My die is level in all directions. And if I made this bend, it's the way that I line the next bend up with this bend is I make sure that this end of the tube is on zero, right? And if that end of the tube is on zero, you know that that end of the tube and this end of the tube are in line with each other. And this end isn't lower or higher, if you get what I mean. You can see one side of the tube bumper is finished. Now, when I go to replicate this on the other side, what I'll do is I'll use this point. Now, I'll measure from this point to here, to the mark we made for the first bend. And I'll get that measurement, and I'll take that measurement over here, might make a mark at the bumper mount, and then I'll get that measurement, make another mark, then replicate that 20 degree bend. Then I'll measure from the 20 degree bend mark to the 60 degree bend mark. I'll get that measurement. Then I'll take that measurement and put it out on here, and then I'll bend 60 degrees and that'll be the final bend so I don't do any math for the rest of the car when I'm working on this bumper because the car is symmetrical and I want the tube to be symmetrical so I'll kind of work off reference points and reuse the math that we've already done okay so um, we made a mistake and we're gonna learn from the mistake so what I learned from last time doing the Ford was when I started bending from one direction of the tube, I did not, the mistake I learned was not to put the tube in a different direction into the tube bender, to always keep it going one direction. Now, in this case, because we're trying to make a symmetrical piece, what I noticed was the bend that we tried to make was from this point that way, right? And the bend on this one, we should have put the tube in the opposite way because here's the mark of where we started the bend but we needed the bend to go this way so that the bend went so that the bend ended up here but instead we put the mark in there and we put the tube in the same way that we did the whole thing and we made the bend go that way so now I can still fix that I think we can put straighten that up and then rebend it because it's not a big deal the spoiler is going to be mounted off here the middle so the outside doesn't really matter um, but yeah so when you're doing symmetrical work I think it's okay to put the tube in a different way so that you get the bends the same way so what I'm understanding is when you're working with symmetrical uh, things and you know I'm learning this as I go if you go from that point to this point and you make these two bends and then you get to the center it is then normal to work from that point to this point but using the measurements from this point so for example I wouldn't start by bending the furthest bend what I would do is I would work from this point to this point with the tube in a certain direction then when I came to the middle point I would then do this next bend f next but with the tube flipped in the other direction so I'm not going this way and then that way I'm going this way 
and then that way but I'm keeping in mind that I should put the tube in the opposite way I'm gonna need to think about that but that's what I've kind of figured out so far Alright, as you can see, we managed to save it and we managed to learn a valuable lesson. So that is perfect. Uh, that side of the car is kind of crumbled. So to be honest, this, this bit where it's kind of where we had to fix it and straighten it, it matches the side of the car that's uh, been hit. So um, it's all good. The good thing to mention is the angle of this pipe is the same on the other side. The bends are in the same location, so let me just run through that. So the bend roughly starts here, where the light begins, and roughly ends here, where the light, kind of where, where the hood up here, so that lines up. So let's go over to this side. So the bend starts where this hood bit is, where this trunk bit is, and then here, if we line up the edge of this light, that's where the bend is. So. We are roughly in dimensions where we want to be and this mark lines up with this bumper mount, this mark lines up with that bumper mount, so we look like we are basically good. Alright, this is slouching a bit, so if we lift this end up, does that look better? Upgrading the bolts.
turn this car into an Australian icon, the spoiler is a sheet of colour bond. Can't get any more Australian than that. What's more Australian than that? <laughs> Let me go over the edges so no one cuts their head off. Who's gonna be putting the head there? I don't know. Oh, it's you boys. So, there it is. How to make a spoiler and mount it to your uh, bumper that holds the fiberglass on. Um, Obviously, if I was making a spoiler that was like legitimate, I would take more than one day to do it. I would use proper tube, um, and I, I would probably mount it in the same spot, to be honest. Because as you can see, the way we mounted it is the boot is still completely accessible. Uh, I I wouldn't run a spoiler. I don't know. It really depends. If I was doing a hill climb car, maybe I'd run a spoiler. I wouldn't run a spoiler on the street. But as you can see, this is completely functional. There's enough room for me to fit in between here, get to the battery. Um, but yeah, we made it out of really thin sheet, uh, thin tube, so there is a bit of wobbliness to it. It only takes two bolts to unbolt the whole thing, but I really liked how I could mount it to the rear bumper. It made everything a lot easier. Looks ridiculous, but... Has anyone got a color bond spoiler? Come on. It's, it's the best part about this car.